Hey everybody, welcome to the Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson, and we are doing our My Five series in which we talk to photographic professionals uh, and photographic people about five images that they think are important to discuss. And today we have with us the renowned Ed Kashi, who is uh, has been with us before, and uh, it's nice to have you back, Ed. Thanks for coming back to the Crit House. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. So Ed is a photojournalist. He is a filmmaker and an educator. He has been making images and telling stories for 40 years now, and he documents social and political issues with an intimate and compassionate relationship with his subjects. Uh, he is the member of the, oh, I should have checked on this. Is this the VII photo agency? Uh, that how photo agency. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. My mistake. Uh, he has uh, awards from World Press Photo, Com Arts, and American Photography, and he has uh, 11, 11 bo books to his name. Has that grown since I, uh, since I wrote 14. that? 14. Oh my goodness. It's, it's so good to have you on. Um, and I'm really interested in, uh, the photographs that you have selected to talk about. Can you, before we get there, can you talk about like, when I asked you five images, like, what did you, what did you go through in trying to decide on what five images you wanted to talk about? Yeah. Well, I lost sleep over it because I realized that, you know, with, at this point, my vast historical knowledge of photography, because I I grew up in photography at a time where we were taught like the masters, whatever that means today. But then because of all the mentoring and teaching that I've been able, you know, I've had the privilege to do globally with photographers of all ages, but particularly younger photographers, there's such a wealth of incredible imagery that on any given day, I could pick five different images to answer your prompt. So in the end, I kind of, in some ways defaulted to almost the things that, uh, you know, that have stuck with me that maybe when I was, when I first saw them, I think that's a better way of putting it. When I first saw them, I had like an aha moment about photography. And in some cases, a couple of these images determined my direction as a photographer. Well, that'll be interesting to talk about. So let's take a look at these five images that Ed Kashi has chosen. All right, so Ed, uh, you have chosen five images on our fi My Five series. And let's start off with the first one, which I have to say, I was very pleased to see you choose, Andre Cortez. Tell me yeah. about why why this image. Yeah, so when I was, so just, just to give you, just to give folks some background, you know, I never took a picture before I went to college. I wanted to be a writer. And then I got to Syracuse University and uh, enrolled in the Newhouse School of Communications and um, which has a very has always had a very strong photojournalism and photography program. So the, back then, I don't know what they do now, they steeped us in the history of photography. And when I saw this picture by Andre Cortez, it sort of blew my mind. First of all, it was still, this is in the 1970s where black and white ruled, at least for me, you know, color, if for those who are young or, or just starting, was a relatively new thing in photography, um, particularly in the editorial world. But anyway, so when I saw this image, you know, the lyricism, the the texture, the, the sense of humor, it just, it sort of opened my mind to what photography could be. And uh, one anecdote, that was in like 1977, probably. Mm -hmm. In 1984, I was sent by Forbes magazine to Santa Fe, New Mexico, to do an assignment about a city story about Santa Fe. And in one of the galleries, who was there? Andre Cortez. And the, I'll never the, forget, ma the man, not the photograph? The man, the man the and his photographs. And he was probably in his early 80s at that point. He actually died three months later, but I'll oh. never forget you know, I stopped for an hour from what my work, I went to this gallery, he was there sitting in a chair, this beautiful old man. And I remember just sitting on my knees sort of at his feet, not to make it sound too dramatic, but you know, just to really sit at the feet of a master. And, um, and this was at a time where people appreciated the masters. Mm -hmm. They actually took something from it, as opposed to it feels today masters are almost derided. But anyway, that's a different point and a different issue we, uh, to talk about. But anyway, it was just one of those amazing moments as a very young photographer where um, I got a chance to have a glimpse of someone who who not only influenced me, but in some ways influenced the course of photography. Absolutely. You're number two, sir. 
So W. Eugene Smith, I mean, my gosh, anyone who's a photojournalist or a documentary photographer should, should certainly know who he was and his work. Um, you know, when I saw this image from his incredible body of work on Minamata, a, a, a fishing village in Japan that he spent years documenting, at, well, at, he was beaten up by corporate thugs. He, he ended, I think, marrying a Japanese woman. I mean, you talk about immersive photography uh, I mean, you can talk about Eugene Smith on so many levels, and he was a very flawed human being, but as a photographer, um, he really sort of set set the templates for the different ways we could work uh, for doing in-depth documentary journalistic work. And so this was one of the first really, in some ways, environmental uh, environmentalist photographer, uh, uh, environmentalist photography project. Anyway, he chronicled this fishing village that had been contaminated by mercury from one of the big processing industrial plants in the village. And so this image, when I saw it, not only broke my heart, but, you know, the light, the 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 allusions to sort of, um, you know, Renaissance paintings. I mean, mm -hmm. there's something so beautiful about this, yet so poignant and and disturbing. And, you know, to me, this embodies the greatest um, qualities that 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 great photojournalism or documentary photography can achieve, where it's an image that that captures you and makes you want to look. And then when you read what it's about, you get these other layers of meaning. So even if you never look at the caption, this image is beautiful and amazing, yeah. powerful. But then when you read about it and you learn more about his project, Minamata, it's it just takes a whole to, to a whole nother level. One of the uh, amazing things, great things about what I, we're doing with this My Five series is it just gives us the time to have an image to live with for a couple of minutes at a time. And I know, uh, you know, in this Instagram world, when we're going past things, I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm sitting here with goosebumps on my, uh, and I've seen this image time and time again, but just to live with it and hear you talk about it is um, your number three, sir. Well, this is by Marilyn Mark from her book Ward 81. Uh, uh, she spent months at a, a mental institution for women in Oregon. And uh, when I saw this picture, frankly, Jeff, this image is what set me on the course I took. Because it, it, the intimacy, the power of the image, there was just this, this beautiful black and white tonality. When I saw this image, and I was probably not even 20 years old or, or in that zone, I was still learning photography. I was like, that's who I want to be. I want to spend time in with people who are in difficult situations, basically to be a social documentarian. And so for me, this image really set me on that course. This is another reason why this is fascinating. So that's your origin story in a lot of ways, right? I mean, because you have you have for 40 years been documenting the world in so many ways in this was one of the initial sparks. That's that's a great story. Number four, sir. And then Susan Mizellas, who who well, I consider a dear friend. I've been very fortunate over the years to to get to spend time with her and have conversations with her. She's um, in many ways a genius. She's just brilliant. And as a photographer, um, she her body of work on Nicaragua was, um, you know, it just it it set a high mark at that point for this kind of photography, this kind of war reporting. Um, I mean, which I don't even, I don't, I guess you can do that now, but where she really embedded with one side, if you like, you know, the Sandinistas and just spent years. Uh, I mean, essentially she was the chronicler of that revolution. And this image embodies so much of her gutsiness. Also just that sort of macho, like, uh, I know this is, you know, <laughs> I mean, these guys look so cool, uh, which especially for an impressionable kid at the age of 20, young, you know, my early 20s, it was sort of like, wow, what a what a scene. You know, and there's something else, Jeff, about photography, not just photojournalism or documentary work, but, you know, photography requires us to physically be yes. in a place in space and time. You have to so, live with it. To live with it and to like just be there, not not find out at the restaurant bar, you know, hotel bar, what happened that day. You have yes. to be there. And right. to me, that's one of the enduring and essential qualities of being a photographer. So if, you know, if you love beautiful people shooting fashion or if you love clothes, then it's like you get to be close to that. If you love doing, 
you know, if you want to do conflict or war, you get to be close to those things. And this image captures in the same way that Eugene Smith's picture from Inamata or Marilyn Mark's picture from a, you know, a, 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 a mental institution, you know, it, it's that sense of like, they were there. Yeah. We're there. And to me, that aspect of the personal experience of making images might be one of the most powerful aspects of being a photographer. Speaking of which, uh, the way you talked about uh, Susan's work is not dissimilar from this gentleman who took this photograph. Yeah. Yeah, Sebastian Salgado, who is just, uh, you know, also quite a brilliant man and his wife, uh, Liliana uh, often is in the shadows and does not get the credit she deserves. But, uh, you know, the two of them are powerhouses. Uh, Sebastio, you know, is not only an amazing photographer and his ability to, what's amazing, what's great about his work is he, in some ways, his work is accessible. It's not so complicated yet. It's so sophisticated. Um, and and I believe all the great, the greatest artists are able to achieve that that sort of dual duality in their work. Some artists are incredibly brilliant, but they're so com their work is so complicated. Only like a, a select group of people on earth can understand it. With Sebastio's work, I think anybody can understand it, but it's also sophisticated from a photography mm -hmm. or artistic yeah. point of view. This image, which is from his work on the Kuwaiti oil fires at the end of the first Gulf War. So I think this is probably 1990, 91. Um, the light, the the texture, this it's 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 like an image that's almost hard to believe that this actually was happening. And I mean, again, as I said earlier, you know, you could probably pick five Salgado images ten times over, and we could talk about it as images that were influential. And yes. so, and I'm not saying this is the greatest image he ever made, or I think this is the best image he ever made. And I don't even like that kind of, you know calibrating photography and art but anyway to me this is an image that captured so much of the qualities that make him such a tremendous visual artist and um and photojournalist well and I, I i had the opportunity to meet him briefly not too long ago when he was at the leica gallery in boston and uh what a what a generous gentle man so ed kashi thank you so much for showing us your five images um i am Always honored to have uh, folks like you come on the program. I thank you very much. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing more work from you. Uh, we will link to all of uh, Ed's uh, websites and anything he's doing these days. So you can take a, look, uh, take a look at that and find more information about him. And I want to thank you all for watching the My Five series on the Crit House.